What do you do when you are afraid? When fear grips you and sleep eludes you, you go to bed at night and you can't sleep because you are afraid. Fear of failure, fear of the unknown, fear of not getting married, fear of marital challenges, fear of financial challenges, fear of not doing well, not succeeding, fear of business not taking off, fear of not getting a job, fear of not finding a spouse, fear of children not doing well. Just You can just name it. But what do you do when you are afraid, when all these things are bombarding your mind and you have no peace? What do you do? I'm looking at uh, Revelations chapter 2, verses 8 to 11. God was speaking to the church in Smyrna. This is called the persecuted church. Now, take the word church from there and put your name there because you and I are the church. The church is not a building. It's just a place where we gather, but you are the church. So the Lord was speaking to the persecuted church. You who are being persecuted, you whose mind is being bombarded by fear of the unknown, what do you do? The Lord was speaking to the church in Smyrna, and here is what he said. Revelation chapter 2 from verse 8. And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things says the first and last, who was and came to life. Who was dead, sorry. Who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of these things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. Verse 11. He who, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. The Lord was speaking to the church in Smyrna. This is a church that had gone through tribulation, I mean, severe suffering, severe trial. They thought they were poor, but they were not poor. Poverty is not only when you lack finances. I mean, uh, being rich doesn't mean doesn't always mean money. We always want to associate richness with money, but being rich doesn't always have to be money. It has to be the it can be the grace God has placed upon your life, the anointing God has placed upon your life. So this church thought they were poor, but the Lord said they were not poor. God said, I know the tribulation that you have been through. Those who are opposing you, those who say they are Jews but are not. Again, those who say they are Christians but are not. A lot of people are claiming to be Christians today, but in reality, they are not. He says, those who say they are Jews but are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. And then the Lord said to the church, do not fear any of those, those things which you are about to suffer. Imagine praying, talking to the Lord, crying to the Lord about something, and then the Lord says to you, do not fear those things which you are about to suffer. The Lord is saying to his church, do not be afraid of the persecution that is ahead of you. There is a persecution ahead of the church, but God is warning us ahead of time. Do not be afraid of the persecution that you are about to go through. Here is what he said to them. He said, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. Hear the word of the Lord to you this morning. The devil is about to throw some of you into prison. Why? so that you will be tested. Prison is a place of confinement. It's a place of a place where you are placed until judgment is placed upon you or until you know you've been through trial and you've been convicted and then they place you there. So prison is a place of confinement. The devil is about to put you in a place of confinement. Financial confinement marital confinement, spiritual confinement, health confinement. The devil is about to put you in a place of confinement. Why? So that you will be tested. 
And then he says, uh, indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. What do you do when you are afraid? The word of the Lord said to the church in Smyrna, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Meaning they will be suffering certain things. They will be going through persecution. They've already been going through tribulation, trial, challenges. But God said to them, do not be afraid. It means there was more on the way. And the word of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid, meaning there was a tendency for them to be afraid when they go through these things. But God said to them, do not be afraid. The devil is about to throw you into prison. There are some of you, the devil hates the anointing upon your life and therefore he will attack you. He will attack you everywhere. Your finances, your marriage, your children, your friends, your relationship. He will attack you because the devil hates the anointing upon your life. The devil hates what you represent. The devil hates what you stand for. And therefore, the devil will attack you. It's not because you've done anything wrong. Sometimes it's because of the anointing placed upon your life. You will be attacked. But the word of the Lord said to the church is matter. When you are attacked, when you are put in prison, it is to test you. God is allowing these things to happen to test you. Listen to me this morning. God is testing your faith. God is testing you. He's allowing the devil to put you in prison for you to be tested. What do you do when you are afraid? You're listening and you're saying, oh gosh, what am I going to do when I'm tested, when I'm tried, when nothing is going well with me? And you're already saying, Thing, I'm already going through challenges. And you're telling me I'm going through, I will go through more challenges, more difficulties. Is that what you're saying to me today? Well, the church in Smyrna, they were already going through persecution. They were the persecuted church. They were already going through persecution. And yet God said to them, do not be afraid of those things which you are about to suffer. God is saying the same thing to you. Do not be afraid of those things what you are about to suffer. What do you do when you are afraid? What do you do? when you do not know what to do what do you do when things are not going well for you what do you do when you are afraid of failure afraid of persecution afraid of losing your children afraid of dying afraid of your business not booming afraid of you not getting a job afraid of not having children afraid of not getting a husband or a wife what do you do when you are afraid this morning i'm going to give you three things you can do when you are afraid number one look to the one who called you whenever you are afraid look to the one who called you look at his cred credibility look to the one who called you isaiah chapter 43 let's look at the scripture isaiah chapter 43 the lord said to jacob Let's go to the scripture and see what the Lord said to uh, Jacob. Isaiah 43, verses 1 and uh, verses 1, 2, and 3a. The Lord said to Jacob, He says, But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you are afraid, look to the one who called you. Because here is what he said. He said, when you pass through the waters, I will be there with you. When you go through the rivers, they will not overflow you. And when you go through the fire, when you, when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. You're not running through the fire, you know. When you walk through the fire, he says, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. Why? For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. So when you are afraid, number one, look to the one who called you. Look at his credibility. What has he said to you? He said, I've redeemed you. I've called you by, 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 I've called you by, by, by your name. And he said, when you pass through the water, I will be with you 
When you go through the when you go through the rivers, what did he say he will do? He says they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Number one, when you are afraid, look to the one who called you. Number two, what did the Lord say to uh, the church in Smyrna? He said, do not be afraid of those things which you are about to suffer. The devil will throw some of you in prison to be tested. But what did he say to them? He said, be faithful. Number two, when you are afraid, remain faithful to the end. When you are afraid, afraid of the future, afraid, you know what you're afraid of. You know what you're wondering. You know what you're afraid of as I'm talking to you. Fear has crippled a lot of people. Fear has prevented a lot of people from moving forward in faith and doing what God has called them to do. They are afraid of failing. So they rather not try anything because they are afraid of failure. You know what? There's nothing wrong about failing. We learn from our mistakes. So the second point, when you are afraid, remain faithful to the end. What did the Lord say in the book of James? Let's go to scripture again and see what God said in James. James chapter 1 verse 2. He said, my brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. This is the book of James chapter 1, um, verses, um, verses 2 to verse 5. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. <laughs> How do I count it a joy when I'm going through persecution, when I'm going through trial? He says, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. And he says, let patience have its perfect work in you, that you will be lacking nothing. Remain faithful to the end when you go through trial. And verse 12, James 1 verse 12, he said, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Again, blessed is the man who endures temptation for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord promised to those who love him. Remain faithful till the end when you are afraid afraid of whatever it is afraid of whatever it is you know what you are afraid of as i'm talking to you as you're listening to me you know what you are afraid of remain faithful till the end that was what the lord said to the church in smyrna he said remain faithful again revelation chapter 2 he said remain faithful Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison uh, that you may be tested and you'll have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. What do you do when you are afraid? Remain faithful to the end. And the third point that I want to give to you today, what do you do when you are afraid? Point number three, hold on to the promises of God. Woman of God, man of God, child of God, when you are afraid, that is the time to hold on to the promises of God. What are some of the promises of God? Isaiah chapter 1, Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 10. It says, fear not for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Let's go to the scriptures and uphold you with my righteous right hand. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10. This is the promise of God. Fear not. For I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. The word of the Lord is saying to you, hold on to the, promise of, the promises of God. Excuse me. Hold on to the promises of God when you are afraid. In the book of Philippians, we are told, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 to 6, it says, be not anxious about anything. But with prayers 
and supplication and thanksgiving, let your request be known unto the Lord. So whenever you are afraid, do not be anxious. Here, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 to verse 6. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6, Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Jesus Christ. When you are afraid, reach out to God. When you are afraid, that is the time to hold on to the promises of God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, We have not been given a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Let's go to 2 Timothy. It's good to see the things by yourself. It's good to see them as we read them. 2 Timothy, we are told that we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but of sound mind. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. So when you're afraid, you know that that spirit is not coming from God. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power out of, and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is a spirit. And if it can be received, it can also be rejected. Reject the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. You are a child of God. You are a man of God. You are a woman of God. You've got power. You've got strength that has been given to you. Fear is a spirit. You can reject that spirit because you received it and therefore you can reject it. And I encourage you today, reject the spirit of fear because it is crippling you. It is preventing you. It is stopping you from being the man and the woman of God that God called you to be. But today, I break that stronghold over your life in the name of Jesus. I release you into a new realm of boldness, of soundness, of peace, of courage. Step out in faith and begin to do the things that God has called you to do. Because God is with you. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He said, when you go through the waters, I will be with you. When you go through the river, they will not overflow you. When you go through the fire, when you walk through the fire you will not be burned man of god woman of god step out in faith and begin to do the things that god has called you to do do not let fear cripple you say enough is enough you've sat be behind and you have allowed fear to bully you but today in the name of jesus rise up and with boldness and confidence say i reject the spirit of fear and i'm making a conscious decision to move in faith i may fail but i'm not stopping i'll rise up again ah micah said my enemy do not laugh over me i may be down today but i will rise up again in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't be afraid to fail. There's nothing wrong in failing. Micah, let me turn, let me look. Let, turn with me to book, the book of Micah. Micah chapter 7 and verse 8. He says, do not rejoice over me, my enemy. For when I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. You may fail in your trial, but so be it. We'll learn from our mistakes, but don't let that stop you from moving in, in, in faith. Don't let that stop you from trying things that God has called you to do. A lot of you are walking in disobedience. God is calling you to do something, but you are afraid of failing. And that fear has crippled you. I break the stronghold of the enemy upon your life in the name of Jesus. And I release you into boldness. Hallelujah. If you fail, it's okay. It's part of the journey. You will learn from it. And the next time you do it, you will get it. Even if you have to fail how many times, that's okay. God is still with you. He's teaching you. He's training you. He's, he's showing you things that you need to do right so that you will get it right. Do not be afraid of failure. What do you do when you are afraid? One, look to the one who called you. He said, I'll walk with you through it all. Number two, remain faithful till the end. He said, count it all joy when you fall into various trials for the testing of your faith 
produces patience. Let patience have its perfect work. What do you do when you are afraid? Third point, hold onto the promises of God. The word of the Lord says, fear not, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is your portion. God is on your side. Do not be crippled by the spirit of fear. Reject the spirit of fear and move forward in faith and God will back you up. God honors faith. Faith honors God and God honors faith. Move in faith and God will see you through and you will succeed. God is with you. Move in faith and reject the spirit of fear in Jesus' name. Shalom.